Good day, viewers. You are welcome to yet another edition of uh, the explanation of uh, particle chemistry and short analysis to be precise. I've made a video on the cations and now we can get it using sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia. I've made a video on it so you can check my channel, check just subscribe and check the channel. You will see a lot of videos that will help you. Now, today in this video, I want to explain how we can get an ion, the analysis. What are the reagents that we use? And how can we get it? So it's very, very good that you have uh, a good knowledge of it. Maybe you are having GC exam or YAC exam or anything or you're in school, even secondary or university. It's very, very useful. So let me give you an explanation of it very shortly. There are some ions. There are some anions that are expected of you to know how to analyze. Major anions. What are they? Now, these are the list. The first one we have is Cl minus. That's the chloride. Okay. We have the CO3 2 minus, SO3 2 minus, SO4 2 minus, NO3 minus. All right. And uh, probably sometimes S2 minus. Now, as far as these anions are concerned, you must know how to do a preliminary test of each of them and confirmatory test and we have some common reagents that we always use so what i will do now is that i will give you the reagents and tell you the color change the precipitate you are expecting to get because in gce you must know everything you find you don't have to do any account of any experimental procedure and even in your normal uh, school candidate or work all you have to know is that you must know the theory before you can now practicalize because experiment is when your expectation is being met so you must have an expectation before going to this uh, experimental uh, laboratory and practical means you are practicalizing what you have calculated that's practical so you don't have to go into the laboratory with a blank knowledge you must have an idea of what you are getting you are just going to the laboratory to confirm so that's why the theoretical knowledge of practical is very very important and sacrosanct okay now what do we now do the first presentation reagent i will mention here is your agno3 agno3 means silver trioxo nitrate 5 agno3 if you are applying this into a solution what are you expecting to get now for sure you are going to see white precipitates let me use PPT. Please don't use PPT in your examination. It's just for the sake of video, please. So, white precipitate. When you get white precipitate, what are those aeons that you are inferring? Okay, that will give you white precipitate. There are three aeons in terms of AgNO3. We have Cl minus, CO3 2 minus, and SO3 2 minus. These are the three aeons. That will be present in the solution that will give you white precipitate when you introduce silver trisonitrate 5 into that particular solution. Now, when you have 3, how do you now know which is now present? Because any of the 3 will give us white precipitate. There are ways in which we can still go further to get this. How can we do that? Now, this is the first thing, please. There is something that we'll be using. This and this, this is the OPs. The one that have the subscript of 3 and 3, both of them, they are soluble in mineral acid, BH, HCl, or HNO3. But whenever we use this, because this finishes with NO3, eh, we must use HNO3 so that the NO3 and NO3 will be in what? In correlation. That's how we perform the experiment. We must use what? HNO3. Now, how do we go about that? Very simple. What you have to do is that once you get your white precipitate, the next thing you will now introduce into that solution is your HNO3. Once you put your HNO3 solution and the precipitate dissolves, okay, it means you need a further test to confirm if it is this or this because both of them will dissolve. But mind you, if the precipitate refuses to dissolve, if the precipitate is insoluble after the introduction of what? Mineral acid, be it dilute HNO3 or dilute HCl, but HNO3 in this case, please. But if the precipitate did not dissolve in soluble, it means 
chloride ion is present. It means what? Chloride ion is present. So, once you now get chloride ion, when the precipitate is insoluble, to further confirm chloride ion, we have one thing we always introduce. We call it aqueous ammonia, NH3. Are you getting it now? When you put NH3, it will now dissolve that precipitate that has not dissolved before. That's for that test, that's the confirmation. It will now dissolve it. Once you dissolve it, we have confirmed that chloride ion is present. We now say confirm. Chloride ion was confirmed. Okay? That's that about chloride ion. Please, if you didn't understand, you can rewind this video or you pause and try to what assimilate or you can take your pen, try to jot things down, please, so that you can understand it perfectly. That's just the bedrock of everything. Now, the next thing is this. We have confirmed chloride if it were because it was if it was chloride ion. That's by the way. Now, let's say it is not chloride. If the solution now dissolves after addition of what HNO3, it means it is either this or this. Now, how do we now get if it is this or this? There are several ways, like two ways or three ways. Let me now give you the two ways. Now, immediately the precipitate starts dissolving. When it starts dissolving, it will bring out gases. We call it evaporescence, evolution, uh, evolvement of gas. Gas will be evolving. Whenever, whenever you see gas, there are things you must do. There are major things you must do. First one, you use your hand to do like this. You must perceive the odor from the test tube. The odor is the first thing. And since it's coming out, we see maybe it's color or colorless. Now, both of them are always colorless. Have that in mind. They are both colorless. Please. Now, because what you come out of this will be CO2. What you come out of this will be SO2. What are the properties of the gas? The properties of this gas is that it is colorless and odorless. It is colorless and what? Odorless. Now, colorless and odorless. Because we bleed it out in our nose. Carbon force, I bleed it out. We did not see any, we can't see. I'm bringing now, now. I can't see any color and I can't perceive any odor. It's colorless and odorless. But how do we now know is the one? Number one. Number two is this. You now test with moist litmus paper. Please, you must put moist for gas. Moist litmus paper. Now, this is non metal non metallic, non metallic oxide. They are acidic in nature. So, if you turn blue moist litmus paper red, red is a significant uh, to add to acid. Turn it to red, which shows that it is CO2. Another thing we always use for this, which is the final confirmatory test, is that it turns lime water milky. Why? Because lime water is CaOH2. That's CaO dissolved in water. This is slick lime. Okay? Plus CO2. You see now, it will now give us, it will now turn to CaCO3. And CaCO3 is limestone, which is a whitish solid. It is solid and it's white. So this is the milky thing that it will turn to. It will turn lime water milky, okay, and and water. But we needed this. So now let me say it again, please. When you are testing for CO2, what does dissolve? It brings out gas. When the gas is coming out, you see that it's colorless, odorless. It turns blue litmus paper, moist blue litmus paper red. That's the third thing. Fourth thing is that it turns lime water milky. That's that about that. CO2 gone. We have confirmed for this. We have confirmed from this. Let's go for SO2 now. What is unique about SO2 is this. When the gas is also coming out, what do you do? You perceive the odor. Okay? You perceive the odor. SO2 is also colorless. But it has an irritating smell. I have a friend that always remembers that SO2 means it's so as if you are fatting. Okay? It has an irritating smell. That's number two. And it also turns blue, moist blue litmus paper red because it's acidic in nature. So now, from our ions, you can see that we have tested for chloride ion now. We have tested for CO32 minus, SO32 minus. It remains SO42 minus, NO3 minus, specifically. Now, how do we test for SO4? Two minus. We introduce another reagent which is called barium chloride. When you introduce barium chloride, you are bound to always also have white precipitate. Sorry for writing BPT. White precipitate. Now, 
What are the things that we must infer? We must infer CO3 2 minus, okay, SO3 2 minus, you see now, and another thing, SO4 2 minus. Talk like the normal one, please, former one. Once you see why precipitate, these are the three agents that will come out. What is the next thing? I told you that this thing and this thing can dissolve the mineral acid. So let's use that method now. But in this case, we are using HCl. Because it is chloride, it must be chloride. The other one was nitrate, it must be nitrate. Though we are using hydrochloric acid now. The dilute hydrochloric acid. It will not dissolve this and this. After the solution, we can use the method I've taught, I just taught you now. In terms of the gas, to now confirm each of them. That you know already now. But when the precipitate did not dissolve, after the addition of dilute hydrochloric acid, the precipitate did not dissolve. The precipitate remains insoluble. What now happened? It means you are inferring this. Because we know this and this will dissolve. That's just the best way to test for SO4 2 minus, as far as I'm concerned. That's the best way. So that's having said. Now, let's now go. We have done this now. Let's go to NO3 minus. Now, NO3 minus is unique for its color, which is reddish brown. Because NO2 will come out of NO3 minus. And NO2 gas is brownish. We can call it reddish brown or brown. Okay? Now, there are two ways in which we can test for NO3 minus. We can test for it directly using a brown ring test. What do you mean by brown ring? There are some reagents that we can use in terms of brown ring. So, how, do, how, how does that one go? This is how it goes. Now, to the solution, when we have a solution, we had, instead of this, we have to add freshly prepared. Freshly prepared. It must be freshly, freshly prepared. Freshly prepared. FeSO4. This is ion 2 tetrahydrosulfate 6. If you do not prepare it freshly, you leave it down, it will later turn to ion 3. And we don't need ion 3. Now, plus conk H2SO4. When you mix the two together, you know about we now, if you ever add this, you also have concave as well. You'll be adding it from the tip of the world of the test tube. You'll be sliding it down like this. So, in this is the solution. You now see a ring which is brown, brown ring at the junction of the solution with that of the world test tube. So, the ring, there will be a ring which is the brown. So, there will be brown ring in the observation. Brown ring, okay, observed. At the junction of the test tube and the what solution. So what are you inferring? You just say what NO3 minus present. Very simple. That's one way, please. The second way is this: you can check and observe and infer. So you can test using the gas. How do you do that? You know, before you can get gas, you have to eat the solution or you add acid to a solid. Okay. So anything can happen to the solution, you can heat the solution directly. You heat it directly. Okay? Or you add acid and you still heat. After that, you now get a brown film. A brown film will be coming. You get a brown film. After getting a brown film, you are burn sure. You now going to say what? NO2 gas from NO3 minus. That's how to go about that. Now there is a particular reagent which combines AgNO3 and barium chloride, silver thiazonitrophile and barium chloride together. It functions as a singular reagent. You can see that also in the examination. So let me show you that so that you can know how to go about it. What are they? PbNO3 2 or PbCH3COOH. Now, we have put two here also. What do we call it? We call this one lead triozonitrate 5 or lead ethanoate. This is uh, from ethanol. Lead ethanoate. When both of them give white precipitate, both of them will give us what? White precipitate. White PPT. Now, this one now com combines this, 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 and this. When you, white, white, when you have white precipitate in any of these reagents, you are inferring chloride, CO32 minus, SO32 minus, 
Also, SO4, 2 minus. You are inferring them, as the case may be. So, now, it means this one is very powerful. So, after inferring any one of these, you can now use what I've taught you to now confirm for any of them now, which is very, very easy and simple. What is another thing, please? The next thing I would like to tell you is the use of oxidation or oxidizing agents. Why? Because you can also know which is which out of these two using because this is the reducing agent so3 2 minus and uh, s2 minus are reducing agents it means if you introduce kmno4 which is potassium tetra ozomanganate 7 if you introduce it to them this one used to be a purple color reagent the purple color will change to colorless. Sometimes we say the decolorize. Once you introduce that into any of these solution, it will decolorize it. Now, that's one thing. Another thing is using K2, CR2. Both of them are acidified, please. Acidified. This is also what? Acidified. Sorry for this bad handwriting, please. I want to get everything as fast as possible. Acidified. So we have K, K2, CR2. O7. Okay, this is called potassium ether ozo dichromate 6. Okay, this one initially it will have an orange color. So the orange color, when you add it to this, it will change to from orange it to green. And when it changes to green, you are bound to know that this, this is a reducing agent and it can either be this or this so you can now use a confirmatory test to test for this so once this one now give a confirmatory it means it's this once this one turn negative in the confirmatory of SO2 from here or anyhow you know it is this so that's how to go about it I think I've done a lot in terms of these anions you can also read more and try to check for that but these are the basic things you need to know thank you God bless you if you have not subscribed to this channel please subscribe press the uh, bell icon like this video and check our channel i still have a lot of videos that will help you and if you need anything please write it in the comment section below if you need any video or any you have any problem you still want me to solve put it in the comment section below and i'll be and i'll gladly make a video on it thank you god bless you for watching see you next time